I've decided I need a little levity on my channels. I've decided to start a new playlist and I'm calling it simply my favorite jokes. Now these aren't jokes that I developed. Maybe I'll try my hand. I've come up with a couple along, along the way, but these are mostly other jokes that I've heard over the years. And I just want to tell them and keep them short and hopefully you get some amusement out of it. And I want to start with one today that's set back in the 1960s in the Soviet Union. Sergei Nikolaevich Dubitsky lives, works, and basically is the chief guy, the head guy at Collective Farm 714, which is the extreme west of the Soviet Union, right along the border with the Polish People's Republic. Dubitsky's a wise old man. He survived the Great War. He survived the Revolution. He survived the Civil War. He survived the Russian-Polish War. He survived the purges. He survived World War II. And now he's getting old and he's just happy to do his daily thing on the state farm. One day he's at the motor tractor station checking up on all the equipment, the tractors. It's a Monday. And he sees these cars and trucks drive up. Out of them get these officials and other people, and they've got hard hats on and clipboards. And they're all talking to each other. And they start surveying areas of the state farm. And they do that over the next two days. But nobody will communicate with them. Nobody tells them what's going on or why they're there. A couple days later, like Wednesday and Thursday, the Pauls start showing up. People are coming over the border from Poland. They've got... Polish markings on their cars. Some of them are speaking Polish, and Dubitsky can speak Russian and Polish. And he hears them, and they're all talking, and they're all doing the same thing and surveying. And he's clueless. Nobody, he asks, nobody will tell him what's going on. Finally, Friday morning, he comes out, and he was walking around, and you have all the Polish officials and all the Soviet officials, and Pravda's there. They got a big truck, and they've got cameras set up, these big, huge cameras on tripods for television. And finally, somebody approaches him and tells him to get a dozen of the other proletariat from the state farm, and they're to come over here, and they're standing here, and the, the Russians are up on the podium, and the Poles are over to the side in chairs. And finally, he figures he's going to see what's happening. And the cameras start to roll, and the lead Russian guy, the Soviet guy, he's got a Moscow accent, starts talking about how there was a lot of confusion at the end of World War II. And they made mistakes when they delineated the border between the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republic and the, the People's the Polish People's Republic. And that, to their credit, the Soviets, comrades, fraternal brothers of the, the Polish communists, had decided that a mistake had been made and that this state farm that Dubitsky worked on and headed up was actually supposed to have been in Poland and not in the Soviet Union. And in this sign of comradeship, the Soviet Union was moving the state farm from Soviet territory to Polish territory. And following that statement, the Polish officials got up and, you know, talked about fraternalism, communism, and the wonders of Marxism, and Leninism, and scientific socialism, and all that stuff. And all this is being recorded by Pravda. Finally, after the polls finish, this woman reporter comes up to uh, Sergei Nikolaevich and shoves a microphone into his face and asks him, Sergei Nikolaevich, as the head of this state farm, what's your reaction to the news that starting next week, you're no longer going to be a citizen of the Soviet Union. You and your fellow workers are going to be citizens of the Polish People's Republic. Now, Sergei Nikolaevich, being a wise old man, understands he has to be very careful about what he says. He doesn't want to look like he's too eager to get out of the Soviet Union, because that's not going to play well. But he doesn't want to look too reticent, 
being shifted over into Poland because they're going to be his new communist overlords. So he thinks for a while and trying to find something he can say that's neutral. And finally, he comes up with his response. And he goes to speak to the woman. She says, uh, Sergei Nikolaevich, look at the camera as you speak. So he turns, he looks right at the camera and he says, well, it's nice to know that I'll never have to go through another Russian winter. 